so we've gone through a few generator plugins in FL Studio, but now we'll jump over to the mixer to get a brief idea of some of the effects plugins available. And to do so, we'll pick this sound, since it's pretty simple. We'll route that into just some track that we have available. There's obviously nothing going right now, so we'll just pick this one. And in the effects slot, let's first throw on a parametric EQ. And this is a pretty standard EQ. It gives you a visualization of what you're cutting. So you can narrow down a sound however you want it to be. I'm using the scroll wheel to adjust the bandwidth on the bands. And you can also use these sliders over here to move them up and down or change their position and just right clicking resetting to get them back. But an EQ in your arsenal is definitely good to have listed under filter. But you'll note that like everything else, there are all those categories that we can easily narrow down what we're looking at. And also like everything else, if we pick something like the reverb here, we have presets that are listed for it. There are different kinds that we can quickly go to or save our own if we make something that we like and want to keep and be able to recall. But there's a lot of good ones to have in here. Different types of distortion. The destructor is actually a multi-effect. So we have distortion, we have a filter, we have chorus and speaker on, and we can enable or disable those. Or really distort it if we go into the distortion. Or move that distortion in front of the filter. really mangle a sound into something completely different than what it already is when you're using effects like this. And that can come from doing things with like a flanger or phaser or anything like that. I'll scroll wheel that before the destructor so that it is before the distortion. Put a ton of it through. And you can hear a lot of the movement happening from that flanger and then getting distorted as it goes through the destructor. So those are a few ways to combine some effects. And additionally, a good effect to know how to use is a compressor. And if you're new and that's something you've never seen before, here's a fruity limiter. And this is a compressor and limiter. But what it does, a compressor just takes a signal and then you set your threshold and then a ratio. And then you can see that the purple is what is being cut off. Anything above that threshold will essentially just get reduced by a ratio. So it makes the overall dynamic range a little bit more consistent and that can be good. It can make your sound fatter. And it's an important part of both mixing and sound design. Do note that you don't want to go overboard with it. The difference between the two, compression is just a set ratio where limiting is just basically cutting it off completely at a ceiling or the threshold available. And then taking it a step further, Maximus is a multi-band compressor. So it's just basically three bands of different frequencies, low, mid, high, each with a compressor and then a master compressor on top of that. You can see the bands by clicking here. You can adjust where they are and everything like that. But it's definitely good to have a multi-band compressor in your arsenal as well. And through this list, there are obviously plenty of cool things that we can work with. Some of them a lot more specialized. Like Gross Beat. Which can do some record scratch sort of things. And basically control time with a graph. But we won't really get into all the really specific sorts of things right now. But I do certainly encourage you to do so and dig around, find some spots, work through some presets for these different things. To see what they do and see how you can use them. Because some of them are pretty wacky, some of them are really cool, and a lot of these, the only way you'll know is if you just dig in and try some things out. And if you make something you like out of it, just go in, save a preset, and then you'll have it in your plugin presets for generators or effects. And you could just take it, drag it onto a mixer track, and then you'd have whatever effect that might be. In this case, a really drawn out reverb. But just seeing all of these different things is definitely beneficial. And when the time comes, if you don't want to use FL Studio native ones, or you have another plugin that you purchase and want to use that third party plugin, Remember that we can just install it onto the computer and then go up to the Manage Plugins. Make sure it installs into a search path and search for new ones and then you'll find it in the plugin database under Installed and then you'll be able to see new ones listed. Like I mentioned, I have all of these in my new folder because this is the first time I scan for new plugins on this computer. But once you do that, you add them in and you save them into whatever category by selecting it and 
adding to the plugin database here. And then you'd have it in that category to be able to recall it. But as a brief look at a selection of some of these FL Studio plugins and a few different ways we can use them, a few different ways we can apply that to other plugins that we'd use later, we've now at least got a little bit of background information that we can build on as we continue to use FL Studio and its synthesizers and effects. So with that, we'll call it good and then come back in the next video to look at just a few additional tools and helpers that we can use to make our experience a little bit easier. So I will see you then.